Hello everyone and welcome back to another beginner's guide on City Skylines. I'm going to be explaining road hierarchy and I kind of strayed away from Williamsburg because I feel as though I'm not quite able to explain every aspect of this game effectively by doing an actual playthrough. So instead I'm going to do an infinite money which I highly, I, I just don't like. I don't like doing this. So. I'm doing this for you guys and show you guys what each aspect of the game is. Um, I'm going to do road hierarchy first. And um, so how I normally do my cities, uh, dealing with um, the roads. The road tab itself has multiple different sets of roads underneath them. Okay, Depending on what you want to run in your city depends on how you set it up. Um, Honestly, uh, as you can tell, it's already split up into different sections. It's split up between highway, six lane, four lane, and uh, two lane. I normally stay away from two lane, and I tend to stick with the four lane or the two lane um, boulevard because it is a two lane road. But so, you, so it's a two lane road, but it has the width. Of a four-lane road so that's why I normally use this one instead of a two-lane road I only use two-lane roads in places where I can't use anything else um, something important about a hierarchy of roadways is that whenever you have highway junction highways are really fast and if you run it immediately into a two-lane road you're gonna have a bottleneck um, you have to slowly step it down from what it is at the fast level to what it is at the slow level. So if you have um, not as many lanes but really fast, you need to bring it down into a lot of lanes of really slow. That way it gives a traffic chance to spread out and uh, effectively maneuver into different areas. So normally whenever I build off of highways, um, as you're going to see in this one. So a lot of people recommend doing a traffic circle. I actually don't like doing traffic circles. Um, personally, myself, I like managing stuff differently. But this is, for those of you that don't know what a traffic circle is, this is all it is. It's pretty simple. All it is is just a circle that allows the traffic to effectively merge on and merge off. Um... It's one of the more efficient roadways as far as um, uh, traffic flow, but it takes up a lot of space. So the sheer amount of space that this takes up versus what I normally do, um, it, it's, it's quite crazy, the difference. Um, so with this traffic circle, yes, it'd be able to handle a lot of traffic. But what I prefer to do and my preferred method of building off of a highway interchange is using something along the lines of uh, slip lanes off of a main junction road. So if this is, let's say, my highway and um, this is what I have to work with right here, right, uh, I will do something similar to this where I will step it down right um, and branch off onto whatever roadway it is that I'm connecting to and the reason why I do this is because it allows you to make really s small slip lanes and uh, still be able to maintain a lot of road spacing. Um, normally I try to keep it all one direction. So let's say that this is my roadway here. Um, there's that. Let's just go ahead and maneuver that in. So just a small slip lane like that. And then maybe, you know, three more junctions up the road. That way it has time to deal with the uh, traffic. I'll branch off again and I'll wind up meeting in a different location. And then you take it and branch out again. There you go, there's your last branch. 
So normally what ends up happening is um, because of the way that this is branched out, the traffic has an even flow and is able to um, spread out very quickly and efficiently amongst many different roads without having to the bottlenecking effect without the bottlenecking so like this just I'm just gonna throw a mock up here that way you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about um, now granted you don't have to build this like I'm building it um, people build this many different way uh, many different ways just so long as you are able to deal with the amount of traffic so like I was saying earlier with the road hierarchy here, um, this turns into one lane right here. This is one lane of really fast traffic, right? So why not bring it into two lane and make it double directional, right? Um, there we go. And the reason why I say that is just because now you've got your highway coming into a two lane instead of one lane. And um, it allows traffic to spread out more. So let's just say that this is like the first part of this little city. And I would make this more intricate, but I'm just trying to explain basic roadways and get something set up so you guys can see. Uh, so now that that's happened, um, I can move on to the next road and 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 the next road. So essentially what I just did was spread out where traffic comes off of the interstate and where it flows into on the city. So. And then I could continue to spread that out just by simply taking the roads and bring them out away from the center point. So um, I'm just gonna run out a bunch of random roads in different directions just to kind of show you the basics of the road hierarchy. And then let's go ahead and just slap a uh, slap some high density residential on it just to make it look good boom let's go ahead and cut out a uh, cut out that cut out this whole section right here go ahead and put that in you know what I'm not even gonna do zoning for right now um, this is just gonna explain road I'm just trying to explain road hierarchy so um, for right now, uh, focusing on the roads themselves, with all of these roads around now that are two lane, why not upgrade this main road to a three lane? Um, the traffic has multiple places to get off, multiple places to get on, so it will be very spread out amongst the entire city. Now that you've got the three lanes, uh, in each direction going into the two lanes in each direction now I tend to bring it down to the boulevards and I'll connect everything up that way it is all pretty well coordinated and all the same type of um, one lane down two lanes down three lanes down that way it's it's pretty well evened out and as the city runs, once I start actually explaining zoning for you guys, it will make a lot more sense as well. Um, so, there we go. Now I'm not gonna make this city look super pretty right now, or this part of the city look super pretty. I'm just trying to explain basic road hierarchy once again. So this right here, it honestly, this interchange bothers me 
the most out of any interchange I've ever seen. I have plenty of videos in a playlist of how to do interchanges and different tutorials on how to do them and how to better utilize space. This interchange bothers me because it is literally a three lane going into a one lane going into a three lane and then a three lane going into a one lane going into a three lane and you're missing a whole extra lane that you have in here that you could be utilizing on this interchange. So it bugs me. I just don't like that interchange. Um, now that this is all set up and it's all good to go, um, I'm going to leave you all with this and let you just kind of look over it, see how the different roads are smaller as they get away from the interchange. Uh, uh, so how do I explain this? Good rule of thumb, smaller roads, the further you are away from the interstate, bigger roads, the closer you're, you are to the interstate. That's generally road hierarchy and how it works. So all of this looks good. I'm going to leave it as is and I will get back to you all on the next video, the next beginner's guide where I am explaining residential areas, how they work. Um, and uh, so there's that. We'll move into that 